Welcome to yet another episode in the Amiga CD32 review project. This is the sixth installment in the series, and this time I'll be looking at yet another Team 17 title, All Terrain Racing from 1995. All Terrain Racing is a top-down racer in the vein of supercars or micro-machines. You race around in a tiny car doing crazy stunts in order to overtake the opponents. Sounds like fun, right? Being a fan of the genre, with the before-mentioned supercars and micro-machines being some of my favorite racing games, I had high hopes for all-terrain racing going in. But sadly, I was somewhat disappointed. The graphics are really fine, the animation and speed very good. In fact, the speed is quite impressive, seeing as it's running on the old CD32. But in my opinion, the game has one huge disadvantage. It's very unforgiving for someone who has just picked it up. The problem is that you're simply not shown enough of the track, so when you encounter a turn, it's already too late and you end up in the gutter. That's just bad design, if you ask me. It's really a shame, because the game looks and plays so well, but in my opinion, it's totally destroyed by this flaw. I'm sure that I with time could have learned to play the game by studying the tracks, memorizing every turn and every hazard along the way, and in doing so actually have learned to appreciate the game. But as it stands, I probably won't bother trying it once more. It was simply too unforgiving for my taste. But let's take a look at what the reviewers had to say about all-terrain racing back in the day. All reviews lament the fact that the game wasn't updated when released on the CD32. But that sadly seems to be a fate it shares with most CD32 games. Amiga Action gave it 89% which is a fairly high score, I think, but they seem to agree with me about the main disadvantage of the game, as they write the following. The only real criticism of the game is that you perhaps aren't shown enough of the track to make the game playable to the beginner, but apart from that minor niggle, everything else is more than acceptable. I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment, apart from it being just a minor niggle. Amiga Format awarded it a 70% score, and they write, this isn't the game we were hoping for. With little more care and attention on the courses, this could have been jolly. As it is, only one of the four sets of tracks stand the test. Decent circuits would have gained ATR about 10% more. As it is, it just ain't good enough. Amiga Power only awarded the game 38%, a very harsh score, and the main reason for the poor score given by Amiga Power was a dispute between Team 17 and the magazine. Amiga Power had a fairness policy of giving only a 50% score to an average game, instead of, for example, a score in the low 70s to keep the game producers happy. A practice that Team 17 didn't take well to. After delivering their review of all-terrain racing, Team 17 filed a libel action demanding that the magazine would stop lying about their games. In the review they write, there's a choice of three types of course, but only the sports tracks are at all playable. The others don't have the courtesy to mark out the tracks so you know where you're going. And another small snippet from the review is this. The other thing about all-terrain racing's courses is that they appear to have been laid out for the twisted amusement of the designers, rather than, say, with a view to being fun to race on. They're ridiculously overcomplicated, riddled with obstacles, and surrounded by traps to fatally ensnare anyone coming off a bend. The one Amiga magazine awarded it an 85% score, and the one seems to have the same difficulties with ATR as the rest of the reviews, the level design and difficulty. They still give it a rather high score though, which is probably due to their love of the multiplayer battle mode. They write, It is quite simply excellent providing you pick a sport or space track which give you enough room to whiz around and have fun rather than avoiding obstacles. And they finish the review off with, when you first buy ATR you'll find it annoying, but when you get into the game it just gets better and better. I really wanted to like all-terrain racing, but in the end I didn't. The graphics are fine, the control is quite good, but the level design simply lets it down. This will be a 3 out of 5 score for me.